In this video, we're going to take a look at permutations. So let's start with the definition. A permutation is the arrangement of R objects chosen from N objects. So if you've got 10 balls, how many ways can you choose six of those balls? So um, that's what we're looking at here. And the number of permutations is given by this formula, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial. And that has a notation n, so like 10 balls, p for permutations, and r, and maybe 6. So there's an example of how you can go about seeing it as both a formula and as um, what we call NPR notation. And with permutations, order matters. So things like phone numbers and locker combinations, where the order of how you input those numbers matters, is an example of a permutation. So, for example, how many ways can you choose three numbers from the numbers 1 to 60 for locker codes? And each number has to be different, so there's a little extra condition on this one. So the number of things we have in this case is 60, and the r value is 3 because you have 60 numbers and you are taking um, 3 of them so we have 60 p3 and if we use the formula this is 60 factorial divided by 60 minus 3 factorial which is 60 factorial over 57 factorial. And by factorial notation, this is 60 times 59 times 58 times 57 and on and on and on. So I use factorial, 57 factorial, those cancel, and I have 60 times 59 times 58. Now, you may have noticed that you could have just used the fundamental counting principle to do this. You have 60 choices for your first number. Once you've used up one, there's only 59 choices, then 58 choices. That's a totally good way, and you should be able to see those connections. And then we just calculate this. Um, 205,320 with that assumption. Hopefully, you can do uh, this kind of algebraic or simpl simplification work, um, and then you can just use your calculator for the last step of 60 times 59 times 58. But on top of that, you should also be able to take this number and just put it directly into the calculator. So to do that, you enter in 60, and then you press the math key, and go over to the PRB, the probability menu, and number two on that probability menu is NPR, so you'll get that NPR on the screen, and then you just enter the number three afterwards and hit equals, and you should be able to confirm you get that same number. So take a second, grab your calculator, and make sure you can do that, because um, we'll be accessing these keys in this probability menu a lot, um, both in this section and the next section, and um, of course throughout this unit. Now things change a little bit if some of the objects are the same. For instance, um, if you've got... Um, the letters of a word and you want to mix up all the letters, but some of the letters are the same. There's um, some extra information that we have to take into account now. So let's take a look at an example and, and how to solve it um, when you have identical uh, objects. For instance, how many ways can the word mathematics be rearranged? Now, if you count these, there's uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, there's 11 letters. But the problem is, of those 11 letters, you can't just say, well, there's 11 factorial. I've got 11 choices, then 10, then 9, then 8. We can't just do that, because there happen to be two M's, and there happen to be two A's, and there happen to be a couple of T's in here that repeat. And when you have letters or identical objects to be a little bit more um, 
open with this, when you have the identical objects, then you have to adapt the formula so that you can take care of that. So let me just uh, add to our notes if you have certain objects that are identical, and by identical I mean non-distinguishable, you can't tell the difference between them, then we have to adapt the formula and it'll look like this. So we would want to take all uh, 11 objects in this case and do 11 factorial, but there's two m's and uh, those two objects I'm going to call n1 that are the same and I have to divide out by the number of objects that are the same for the first object that's the same and then do the same thing for n2 and do the same thing for n3 all the way to my last one which I'll call nk so I have to divide out by the ones that are the same and that's because uh, if I have two m's I could have chosen the first one or the second one so there's two ways to rearrange those m's if I had three a's which I don't but if I had three a's then three factorial is there's six different ways to arrange those three a's so let's just uh, finish this little definition off n is n1 plus n2 plus n3 all the way up to uh, nk just so we take care of every single object in the group. And so for this example with mathematics, I start, yes, with my 11 factorial. There's all the ways of arranging 11 different objects. But now I have some that are the same. So my first letter, as I said, repeats twice. So there's two repetitions of that. And my next letter, A, repeats twice. So there's two repetitions of that. The T repeats twice, so there's two repetitions of that. The H, the E, the I, the C, and the S are all little individuals, so there's only one uh, H, E, T, oh, sorry, H, E, I, uh, C, and S. And, and so this part you don't really need to even take into consideration, and one times one times one is pretty boring. Um, and now we get an answer, and you just use the calculator to do this. So using the factorial notation, make sure you're dividing and using brackets and things like that, right? Make sure you can do this, because um, there's often times where people just have problems using their calculator. And you should get about 5 million different combinations for this. Okay, we'll take a look at one more example. And this is an example of a student council. So a student council has two grade 8s, two grade 9s, two 10s, two 11s, and then most of it 10 grade 12s. And how many ways can these students be rearranged? Now, they all are individual people. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 18 of them. So if you think about it as individual people, there are 18 factorial ways of rearranging them. However, if I say... I augment the question to how many of these ways can these students be arranged so that the grade level is the only thing that makes them distinguishable to someone else, then it becomes 18 factorial over, well, there's two different eights, but the order of the where they sit or where they're placed doesn't matter. I don't, I don't tell the difference between Amy and Sarah, they're just grade 8s. And I do the same for grade 9s and 10s and 11s and the same for the grade 12s. And this will severely reduce the number of ways that they can be rearranged. In fact, it's still really high. There are a lot of ways. And you'll see that with a lot of the numbers in this unit, but it's certainly a lot lower than just 18 factorial as you can see. Okay, we'll see you in class for some practice.